if you give Annemiek van Vleuten a lead out on hilly parkour, you're going to have a bad time. FDJ tried their best with their pretty strong and deep team, whilst SD Works played Royster up the road. This was Liège Bastogne Liège Farm 2022, won by following last year after Anna van der Breggen did the world's best domestique work. Marta Cavalli here. She won Amstel and Flesh Wallon, but. Hillia Parkour here, harder race, Annemiek van Vleuten, the leader of Movistar, Volering last year's winner, as well as Elisa Longo Borghini, the Italian champ for Trek Sigafredo, who obviously won Paris Bay the other week. But usually, women's and men's race, the race kicks off on Côte de la Radoute before the Côte de la Roche au Faucon, and then a 13k rolling parkour, including a short descent to the finish. SD Works, FDJ, most of the teams, to be honest, got riders in the breakaway, the strongest of whom was Marlon Royser, the Swiss champ for SD Works. UAE were the team that missed it, so they had to control it and chase. We get to Côte de la Radoute, 2k's, 9%, steep bit in the middle, 50 second gap with 31 k's to go and it's actually a cross headwind so it was harder to attack today you can see there in the british flag and it's ashley moolman who with volering nowhere near her back wheel pretty much gives a lead out i had to cut out a little bit but she pulls for a long time with anime van vluten pretty much on her wheel with volering having to close in the wind some way behind her Last year, Van der Breggen pretty much rode for a following sprint. FDJ, as I set up, Cavalli. Chapman had a couple of mechanicals and Grace Brown. And then Van Vleuten counters on the 10% section, drops following off the wheel straight away. And I thought, oh, maybe she's gone, but, but I think Van Vleuten almost did this to just see, am I, how easily can I drop people on the uphills? And compared to last year, pretty easily, following on the radio, saying to slow down, Mulman then having to pace back Van Vleuten for her. Royce are latching onto the back wheel of Van Vleuten, thankfully. Because if she wasn't there in the break, Van Vleuten might have been gone completely. Luckily for SD Works, FDJ, as I said, were strong. They put French national champ Bevita Muzic on the front. Trek were chasing, so Volering and Mulman could sit in. And with 29 k's to go, Royster on her wheel, a bit of a headwind, and Volering sort of shaking it off after that first big effort. Van Vleuten didn't 100% commit to this move, she said in the post-race interview, which you'll hear afterwards. She wanted to take two shots, and when you see her... Pretty much skipping a turn here behind Royster on this downhill, you know it's coming back because Royster ain't pacing, that's for sure. And that opens up counterattack possibilities for teams with multiple riders in the group. You got Cavalli and Grace Brown there. Brown went long in the 2020 edition, I think, where she came second behind Elizabeth Dignan. And she counters strongly here, similar place to where Carapaz countered last year 22 case to go anticipating Cote de la Roche or Faucon where Brown is not good enough to follow the likes of Annemiek van Vleuten well no one really is uh, except maybe Capecchi who isn't here SD Works didn't really have her in the Ardennes they get to the Cote de la Roche or Faucon 1k at about 12 percent Nivia Doma leads it out she's been not as good this year on the steep uphills and AVV promptly launches from the base pretty much she said with, she attacked with like two and a half minutes left in the climb, maybe more. She said in the post-race interview, you need to have guts to go from the bottom. She drops following again, has Cavalli on a gap, and when the camera pans around to Grace Brown about five seconds ahead of her, you see she's got Mulman off the wheel, bridging across to Brown with Cavalli trying to chase and then promptly going past her as expected. And yeah, it's 13 k's to go just about from the top of the Cote de la Roche Faucon. We have two teammates from two teams in the group behind, but Brown's just been in a solo move. She's done and not as strong on the climbs anyway. Cavalli's got Volering on her wheel, who promptly tries to almost attack across over her. And Mulman and Volering didn't work at all on either Cote de la Redoute or Roche Faucon in sort of a synchronized fashion. Very similar, in fact, to Capecchi and Chantal Van der Black in the Paris Bay sectors. That just didn't work. And on Boncel, Annemiek van Vleuten keeps the gap at about 20 seconds, even opens up another five to six seconds on this little kicker before a plateau. And I could talk all day about, okay, here you got Mulman dropping Vollering again, so you know the chase is done. Ultimately, I don't think any of the small mistakes from either, well, small or not, mistakes from SD Works and maybe Cavalli sitting on later would have been enough if they'd corrected it to bring back Van Vleuten. She was way too strong working against two groups of teammates. And as I said, there were some curious things. 16 seconds, 10 case to go. We have this plateau here, but Cavalli doesn't pull through. You see Volleren going through for her turn after Grace Brown, and Cavalli puts Grace Brown back through second wheel again, skipping a turn with AVV. About 15 seconds, 14 seconds ahead, so it was 
there was a chance, a very slender one, maybe to get it close into single digits, but with Cavalli not pulling, that never happened, and they started playing for second later on, with actually Cavalli doing a lead-up for Grace Brown later. Annemie van Vleuten, no, winner of Omloop. She's been fighting, not solo, you have to say, Sierra has been a very big addition, and her team was good here, but Sierra's been particularly good for her this year, but fighting a lot of the time in finales, outgunned against SD Works, and cleaned up today with a dominant performance unmatched on Cote de Redoute and Rochelle Faucon with Cavalli actually I thought she'd be going for the sprint but Grace Brown I think I underrated her sprint she was basically following again Mulman doing a lead out but it's not a lead out it looks like she's going for her own sprint because Volering wasn't on the wheel and Volering closed her and gave the slipstream to Grace Brown and then Grace Brown <laughs> got the Mulman slipstream again and ended up coming second so I don't know I don't know what's going on uh, with, with SD Works today, but I don't really think it could have made too much of a difference. AVV, way too dominant, winning 43 seconds ahead of Brown, Volering, Mulman, Longo Borghini, Cavalli, Sierra, who I mentioned, seventh, then Lippert, Nuvia Doma, and Amanda Spratt rounding out the top 10. Spratt have been in the break, actually, so impressive from her. Here's what AVV had to say after the race. Um, winning have become harder in women's cycling. I think they're more contenders. Uh, I know that I'm better than ever in the spring. Um, but it's not that it always uh, gives you the win. And yeah, to have the confidence today to go just two times all out on Redoud and Rochelle Volcon, to have the confidence. And then when it works out, that's, uh, that's the best. Like, uh, you need so, also some guts to go from the bottom and just have confidence that um, I can drop them. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like it down below if you did. ABV, the heavy Tour de France fan of Swift favorite and not slowing down as she said strongest she's ever been until the men's recap later tonight ciao